Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the two hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. We started out with a nice smackdown in the after hours, actually about a 50 to 60 cent move in a very, very short space of time. Uh, now that's going to probably have a pretty big impact tomorrow. We'll wait and see if there's follow through. The AGQ options that I've been watching. The November 56 put expires November 16th. You can see I started covering those. They were about uh, th three bucks or so. They're now around 410 bid by 430 ask. Probably we'll hit five dollars tomorrow. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if we bounce. Now, on this silver smackdown, we had a equivalent smackdown in gold, as you can see. Uh, the volume here is something that's very, very strange. I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe we're rolling into new contracts. I can't say. But uh, when we look at the volume in the silver, and if you go to my blog, you can see I've done a chart on that. This volume that we have here that came in the after hours, is very significant volume. You can see that this volume nearly rivals the volume that you have in an ordinary day. There's your 8.30. Uh, normally your economic reports come out at 8.30. Then the New York boys come out and smack everything down. And uh, you get your stock market opening around 9.30. So that's the bulkier volume within that hour time frame. You can see we had nearly that much volume in the after hours. Now that's unprecedented as far as I can tell. If we pull back to the five minutes, you can see that this volume is in the time frame here between the 16 and the 20 before the date. So between the 16 and the 20 here, you can see there's no volume, no volume here, no volume here. If we pull back one more to the 10 minute, you can see on the 10 minute, the last weekend that we had where you get to skip, it's right here from the 5th to the 8th. So we're looking at the 16 point here and the equivalent here, there's just no volume. Uh, we do see volume coming in here and that's going to be, I'm not sure what time that is, but uh, as far as I can tell, this is unprecedented to have this type of after hours volume. Now we are starting to rally and we'll see if the rally holds. It doesn't look like it. There is a gap as well from about 33.33 down to about 33.23, about a 10 cent gap in the price of silver. So we'll have to watch that closely. Another one of the charts we're following very closely is going to be Apple. And uh, Apple is continuing to deteriorate. I expect it to continue to deteriorate and we may be looking at, let's clear off this volume so we can get a better view. We may be looking at a serious breakdown. If we get down below, uh, we're talking about right in here, we're, we already are down below that support. Now we had something like that here, but uh, if we do get a dramatic decline, that, that could very easily happen with Apple stock. So we're watching that real closely. The other chart that I've been watching real closely is the Chinese currency. And the reason why is because the Chinese seem to be the ones that are balking at the coordinated devaluation of all the currencies. Now if you remember when we had this rolling over effect and I showed you that on the weekly that the rolling over in the MACD that we were seeing was very very large and very very significant because it was actually overbought above the zero line which is the first time that it happened in forever so I predicted when seeing that that we were going to see new lows now we seem to have those new lows go back to the daily and you can see those uh, a better chart to look at that's more intuitive, this is the US dollar CNY. You can actually go and pull up the CNY USD. 
So that's a bit better of a chart for people to understand it. And I'll probably just uh, do that chart from now on instead. So what this chart shows you is that the Chinese currency was worth about 15 cents, 15 and a half cents or so recently, and now it's up to about almost 16 cents. So 15 and a half cents to 16 cents. So that gives you the idea of how big of a move we're talking about. Uh, my expectation is that the Chinese currency will go to one to one and beyond. So that's going to be up through 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 cents, all the way up to one to one, a dollar, and then and then beyond. So let's get over to, we got a lot to cover, so let's jump over to the questions of the night. Just going to handle a couple of them. This one is from Wolf, and it's Money Velocity. Hi, BJF. I'm trying to better understand M2 and Money Velocity. Lately, many commentators state that you have to watch Money Velocity to see when inflation is really going to kick in. My question is, what should we be looking for? Take a look at the Fed numbers of M2 and M2V. And these are these charts. This is the M2 money stock. And the next chart. These are both from the Federal Reserve. And this is the velocity of M2 money. And that's the M2 money stock. So those are the charts that he's referring to. How should we be interpreting this information? The velocity of money was greatest in 1997 to 2000 and has been declining for 12 years to all-time lows. However, inflation rates have been high by shadow stats figures. Can you please clarify this topic for me? Well, the topic of inflation, that's a complex topic. I'll try to simplify it in this way. Inflation using a standard Austrian school definition, inflation is an increase in the supply of money. Now, when you start talking about all these things like M2 and money velocity and M3 and M1 and cash, and we're going to be talking about bills a little bit later and circulation and things like that, that's not going to be all the money that's going to be part of the money but the basic idea is that the more money that's in the system the more inflation there's going to, the more price inflation there's going to be the more money in the system is inflation that's the traditional Austrian definition which I agree with so the question is why do we see prices do what they do for various things well you have to understand that even though there is inflation which is more money that doesn't say where the money's going to go. So you didn't hear about inflation, for example, in the 1980s or during the 1990s with the enormous run-ups in the stock market. Now, is that inflation? That's rising prices, but it's the rising prices of assets. What about the bond market? What about all the dollars that have flowed into the bond market in this longest 30-year bull market in bonds? Is that inflation? They, some people would say, well, no, interest rates are going down. That's the opposite of inflation. Well, but that's still inflation because that's more money going somewhere. So the money doesn't have to go to silver. It doesn't have to gold, go to gold. It doesn't have to go to food. It doesn't have to go to real estate. It, one bubble can decrease and another bubble can inflate. But overall, is the supply of money overall increasing? That's inflation. And the games that the Federal Reserve are playing right now is trying to control where that money goes. They've done a fairly good job in destroying the middle class. If you remember in the 1970s, the inflation that we had had wage and price inflation. And the wages kept up with prices, so it didn't hurt the little guy as much. The inflation we have now is price inflation and wage deflation and real estate price deflation while we've got stock and bond inflation. So overall, it's leaning towards inflation, but some things can deflate while other things are inflating. Hopefully that explains my view on that. And the next question is from Tinfoil Hat Dude. 
Brother John, thanks for all you do, your truthfulness, brevity, insight, and your faith. Thank you for your forum website to bring us all together. However, an article you linked today sheds light on something that has been a conspiratorial thought in the web, in the web of my mind for a while now. And this is a link to the Daily Nail. So who are we to trust in the sound money crowd? And this is an article that I posted to the blog, How Money Power Controls the Libertarian Movement in the 21st Century. And uh, this is by Meme Hunter. It's from the Daily Nell. He names a lot of names. Uh, talks about Ron Paul being backed by Peter Thiel, uh, the Bilderbergers, uh, the Daily Bell, Lord Rees-Mogg. Uh, a lot of these people, whether they're in these various clubs and things like that, uh, Harry Brown, you can see. So, uh, Joel Scouse and you can read these yourself I don't know the answer to that question uh, I can tell you that I'm not backed by any of the power elite <laughs> but as far as who is and who isn't I really don't know uh, I've wondered at times about Ron Paul uh, I have to just take somebody at face value in other words I have to take them by what they say now, of course, if they say one thing and do another, which is precisely what Ronald Reagan did uh, when he brought on George Bush and started instituting things that he did not campaign on, then I'm going to have to change my mind about that person. Ron Paul, as far as I can tell, he has pretty much done what he said, but then again, he hasn't been in a position such as being president where you could actually see what he would do. Uh, some have criticized him, saying that he was one of the biggest pork spenders. I don't know, but uh, it's quite possible that there is a that they have a horse in every race, and uh, that the bets are rigged from the very beginning. That's one of the reasons why I've never put much uh, faith in politics, and uh, I think that you probably can't go wrong if you're talking about buying physical silver and gold. Now, I don't think that all those in the hard money crowd necessarily uh, suggest that people should do that. That's that's the sort of thing that I'm interested in, and uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see who's, uh, who's a puppet of who. So let's get over to the main topic or topics of the night. I wanted to, first of all, look at an article that I posted to the blog and this was uh, Matt Taibbi from Rolling Stone now let me make it clear first that uh, just because I post an article to the blog doesn't mean I agree with it. it what it means is that I think that it's it contains information that is new or useful and that uh, you should parse with your views so I don't expect people to believe everything they read. I don't think anybody that follows my blog does that. I think they think for themselves. This is just presenting more information to you. Now, Matt's argument is going to be that uh, Biden was right. If you remember that debate, uh, Biden was an arrogant jerk. And uh, I think that it's going to backfire. There's a lot of people who think it's going to backfire. And uh, he just showed himself to be... Uh, a complete jerk in that debate, uh, a snickering, smirking, uh, loud, obnoxious, interrupting jerk is the only way to describe him, the way he behaved. But for some reason, uh, Matt Taibbi thinks that he won the debate, and that's because Ryan wouldn't answer this question. And this is the main question that uh, I want to address here, because this, and I've addressed this question before, uh, but uh, it just it's so irritating to me I wanted to talk about it briefly here uh, Matt says I've never thought much of Joe Biden but man did he get it right in last night's debate not because he walloped sniffing little Paul Ryan on the facts what he got absolutely right despite what you read this morning many outlets are criticizing Biden's dramatic excesses, excesses was his tone Biden did roll blah 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 okay let's get down to the main point okay it's a fourth-rate parlor trick designed to paper over the real agenda, cutting taxes even more for the super-rich bleepheads like Mitt Romney and getting everyone else to pay the bill. Now, this is the question that you hear. I've heard this every day. Probably the liberals say this 
all the time. The term they use is how are you going to pay for those tax cuts? Now, the idea that you would pay for tax cuts just shows you what kind of Keynesian nutcases these people are on the left, like Matt Taibbi. They, they're they so off their rocker, they can't even think straight. Now, let me give you an example. Imagine if you were in a situation in your personal life where you're finding that your wages are going to be reduced. So, uh, let's say you were getting a 20% pay cut. Let's say you worked for a state or county government and they're broke and they're making everybody take across the board 20% pay cuts for this work in the same amount of hours. And uh, you tell that your, to your friend and uh, your friend says to you, oh my goodness, that's terrible. How are you going to pay for that? And you would look at them and say, are you insane? What are you talking about? It doesn't have anything to do with paying for it. I have to cut my spending. Now, yes, you could go out and get a second job, and that might be what they're talking about. But the point is, is that if you're going to give somebody a tax cut, if you're cutting taxes, then to ask the question, how are you going to pay for that, is an admission that you're not cutting taxes, that you're going to raise taxes somewhere else. Obviously, if you're going to cut taxes, you have to cut spending. So that to, to talk about how you're going to pay for it, is is so laughable and absurd and that's what ryan should have said he should have answered biden and said listen you dope head you don't pay for a cut you cut more that's what you do when your income goes down you cut your spending what we need to do is cut spending uh so if our income if our Tax revenues go down by 20% because we decide to give a tax cut of 20% and uh, we're expecting that that is going to reduce our revenues by 20%. Then we're going to cut services by 20%. Now, I don't know why Ryan didn't say that. Maybe Ryan is afraid that the 47% card is already too full and uh, for them to admit they're going to cut people who are feeding at the public trough might be able to flip the election in Obama's way. If it's so, then that's fine. Then the cart is finished. Uh, there's no one pulling anymore, and we go into complete collapse. So I just wanted to comment on that because that irritates me every time I hear the left ask, how are you going to pay for these cuts? It just uh, shows you they don't know anything. They don't even know what they're talking about. Now, the, the other story I wanted to talk about is this story that uh, broke on Saturday, I believe it was, and it's about, well, Zero Hedge had it. I actually had the story earlier than that. I decided to go ahead and subscribe to Bix Weir's Road to Ruta, and he had it uh, for his paid subscribers, and I found it there uh, earlier than anybody had, so we posted it to the blog, but the story went ahead and broke, and it's about these $100 bills that were stolen from the Federal Reserve. Now, if you remember, I covered a few nights ago the new $100 bill and uh, the meaning behind that and Bixweir's uh, theories about that. And if we look at this Zero Hedge article, we'll read a little bit to explain what happened. A month ago, just before the launch of Q Eternity, we caught a rare glimpse of what might be the beta test of one of the Fed's latest ploys in unconventional monetary easing when bank robbers decided to throw money out of their car in central L.A. during a police pursuit. Today, a month later, and four weeks after Bernanke's latest open-ended monetary easing, incorrectly referenced, referenced virtually everywhere as QE3, as Twist has had more flow impact on the market than QE1 and 2 combined, has proven to be at least so far an absolute failure we learn what perhaps may be an even more effective approach to juicing the monetary supply with quite literally brand new, freshly printed Benjamins from AP. Federal authorities are warning merchants to be on the lookout for stolen $100 bills that aren't supposed to go into circulation until next year. The bills were stolen from an airplane that landed in Philadelphia from Dallas Thursday morning. The plane had been transporting money from the Federal Reserve facility in Dallas. And then AP goes on. The theft was reported by a courier service transporting the C-notes 
when the shipment arrived Thursday afternoon at the Federal Reserve Building in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Officials then discovered some of the money was missing. Investigators said these Benjamins are easy to spot. The new bills have sophisticated elements to thwart counterfeiters like a disappearing Liberty Bell in the orange inkwell and a bright blue security ribbon. The FBI said a large amount of bills were stolen, but agents aren't giving specifics. The $100 bills are not scheduled to be released until into circulation until next year. So now Bix has a lot of theories about that. I encourage you if you are interested in that you can subscribe and read his stuff. I'm not going to post his stuff uh, that's for subscribers only but uh, suffice it to say that uh, Bix isn't buying this official story neither am I. Uh, it just it doesn't pass the smell test and I find it very interesting that after uh, this stuff is starting to get some coverage then we find that these things are stolen. Now uh, if there's a conspiracy behind it what's it showing? Uh, if these people were intelligent enough to know uh, that these were being transported and they were bills and they knew what plane they were on, they knew all this stuff, wouldn't they be intelligent enough to know that they couldn't spend them? Uh, or were they counterfeiters trying to get a leap early in on counterfeiting this money? Or was it the Federal Reserve releasing it to all the counterfeiters to prove that they can't counterfeit it? I don't know. But uh, the story definitely doesn't pass the smell test, and there's something else going on there. Now, I wanted to show you a picture that I stumbled across on one of the blogs discussing this that I find absolutely fascinating. And this is a picture that uh, is out there on the Internet. I'll link it for you. That uh, shows you a comparison with the new bills and Monopoly money. And uh, it's really very striking when you look at it that uh, th if these similarities are correct. Now, I tried to check to see if both the Monopoly money was changed as well as these uh, bills were changed. There definitely seems to be a striking similarity. The $1 bill is white. There's pink on the 5. Uh, there's kind of a goldish tint to the 10. The 20 is green and the 50 is blue. Now I was suspicious that the person who came up with this may have done some coloring themselves so I went ahead and pulled some images and uh, I just don't have the memory and all the images here but I do have the $20 series this is from Wikipedia I have the $20 note and I have the $10 note and you can see there is quite a bit of a color difference there uh, does this color difference correspond to the Monopoly money? I can't say for sure. But it is very interesting that uh, these new bills seem to have colors that correspond to the Monopoly money. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is a picture of the $500 Monopoly money, which you don't have on there. You don't have the 100 and you don't have the 500 now this one is very clearly gold and uh, what's so interesting about this is does the Federal Reserve plan to issue a $500 note and uh, or how soon will they have to issue a $500 note because as we know the value of the currency is rapidly declining so some very interesting stuff with the color of the monopoly money I'm not going to put a lot of uh, importance on that but there's definitely a lot going on uh, the fact that these new hundred dollar notes have been around for going on five years now four year four years or five years and they can't seem to get these issued a lot of stuff seems to be riding on after the next election a lot of people are speculating are we going to have a big devaluation after the next election if you remember back in the 1930s it was with the election of Franklin Roosevelt that he came in and he passed the law forcing people to turn in their gold at the then price of 21 something uh, an ounce turned around and revalued it and then that uh, resulted in the devaluation of the dollar by 40 percent so will we see something like that we very well very well could and we'll just have to wait and see. So back to the silver price. Uh, we're in the middle of a smackdown. This is one 
that I was expecting based on the technicals. It just seemed like silver was rolling over. Um, for those of you who picked up the AGQ put or other puts, you're probably going to be looking very good tomorrow morning. For the rest of you, then you probably just want to keep an eye on the price and look for stacking opportunities because ultimately, uh, when everything blows up, the really only thing that's going to matter for you is, is how big is your stack of physical, real physical silver. And we'll talk to you next time.